Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of Builders Talk. And again, Larissa is here. Good morning. How are you going today? So this week on Builders Talk, I'm going to talk to you about the different phases through your business. So last week I spoke about, I guess, three stages of business growth, and it got me thinking a bit more about the stages that would relate to builders. And I realised that there is five distinct phases in growing when you look at the evolution of a builder's business. And the five stages, I I guess I've related them to the progress payment milestones so that it's easy to relate to and understand what you need to know and do to get to the next phase. So these five, fa- five phases are launch, which I relate to as the base stage, growth, relating to the frame stage, secure, which is the enclosed stage, polishing, which is the fixing stage, and liberated, which is the final stage or the practical completion. You finally got that project finished and you're liberated from that work as such. So throughout each of these five stages, you'll be confronted with different challenges, circumstances, and conveniences. And when I relate to conveniences, I mean like um, things that make it more convenient for you or you you now, as you progress through those stages, you start to become, it becomes more convenient for you. You understand how to do things. The processes become easier. And then on the other hand, as you obviously get to different stages, there becomes more challenges. So you get thrown in this mix of challenges and circumstances and conveniences through all those different five phases that you need to overcome. And each of the phases present different landscapes for you to navigate through. So knowing these five stages, five phases, you'll know what to expect at each phase and can be prepared for the common challenges, circumstances, and what becomes convenient for you. And it will make it much easier for you to reach the next phase quicker as they've been identified throughout my process. So everyone wants the same thing, and that is to get to the next level, because usually getting to the next level comes with hopefully more profits and more benefits for the owner that is taking all the risk in that building company. So knowing what exactly to expect will get you there quicker. And if I can teach you how to identify where your business is right now and what needs to be done to grow to get to the next level, level, Um, I guess this framework becomes very valuable to you. So getting the techniques to implement the solutions to growth, profits and customer satisfaction for each level will shortcut your success. And I'll go through the, I guess, higher level overview of each phase so that you can gauge what phase you may be at now and where you are heading to for the next phase. So the first one, as I said, was launch, which I relate to the base stage. So this is the foundation of your business. You've just launched, gone out on your own. You are more than likely, I guess, trying to figure out what you're doing and how you're going to do it. You may often ask yourself, what have I done? Why have I done this? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, So you don't really have a clear vision of where you are going and what you're trying to achieve and you're just trying to make money. And in this phase, I guess you might come across what I refer to as an imposter imposter syndrome. So you start questioning your ability to run your own business. You start to realise how hard it may be to consistently find work. You're trying to make your first profitable sale and you may be using capital, you could be using credit to basically prop up your business. You know, your wife or partner might have a job and you're relying on her income and you're not necessarily making enough at the moment to survive on that income on your own. Um, You might be getting work, but it's not particularly the type of work that you want. And, you know, you might be getting small jobs like decks and maintenance and small renovation and extension type work, but it's not really the work that you're imagining when you started your own business you'd be getting. You imagined, you know, like the person you probably worked for before, you know, they're building these beautiful homes. That's what you probably imagined you would walk straight into when you start your own business. So you're still trying to get your name out there and you're not necessarily marketing yourself. You're relying on word of mouth or previous contacts that you may have had 
within the building industry. So the next stage would then be growth, which I relate to as the frame stage. So like building a frame, this is the phase where you start to grow. Hi, Robin. I can see you finally made it to me. It's probably late at night there, I'm assuming. Um, so you start to realise why you're doing this and you're starting to be known or noticed in your area for the work that you've been doing. So you're getting more prospective clients, but you still have a limited amount of your ideal clients. You're starting to build some of the types of projects you prefer. So you might be starting to build an occasional house here or there. And you're starting, but you're starting to experience issues within your business now. Um, that may be issues with clients, it could be delivery issues, it could be cash flow issues. And you're only paying yourself a minimum wage as such, or you're having, I guess, good or bad months with your cash flow. There doesn't seem to be any consistency to the money or the work that you're doing. You may at this point start to bring in the reinforcements into your business. That could be your wife, your partner, your girlfriend. They start to help you iron out some of the pressures that you're starting to feel now that you're starting to grow your business. And it's probably starting to do some marketing. You've realized I wasn't getting enough work in the launch stage. What do I need to change to get myself to the next level, to the growth stage? So you're starting to, to do the marketing so that you can start to see you know, that consistent income coming in or the consistent work coming in. So then the third phase is secure. And I'm referring to the enclosed stage. So you're starting to become more secure in your business. You've got a clearer vision of what you want and why you're doing it. And you're starting to attract more of your prospective clients and some of your ideal clients. So when I refer to ideal clients, they're probably the clients that you do want to work with and the type of work that you want to do. So you're converting some of those prospective clients into your own clients. You're not just, you know, doing quotes for everyone and not really getting any work. But they may be eating up your time and your patience. So you're experiencing some issues and you might be experiencing client dissatisfaction throughout the process. I guess you're, you're still not really got any help in your business. There might be, like I said, your girlfriend, your wife, your partner might be helping you, but you're still the main person running that business and you, you're sort of starting to see that you can't keep doing everything yourself. You know, you can't, you can't keep doing everything because it's starting to, you're starting to have issues sort of building up and building up, pressures building up before things might explode. So I guess you're getting better at selling and Clients are starting to spend more money with you. So they're asking you to do additional work because the work they're seeing that you're doing, they're really liking and they're starting to be starting to become trustworthy of you and are prepared to spend more money with you. So you might have employed someone to help with administration of the work within the business, but you still feel like you're you are doing all the work, but you are starting to see the benefits of working for yourself and on your business. So your marketing efforts are bringing in more work and you're starting to realise that you need to have systems and processes to help you become more efficient in the delivery of your homes. So this brings me on to the fourth phase, which is polishing, referred to the fixing stage. So at this stage, you know, you in the um, previous stage, in the secure sc stage, you know, you, you've got work coming in, you're consistently getting enough money and now you're starting to see there's little bits and pieces that I need to polish or fix up that aren't going quite so well. So at this stage, you do have a clear vision of what you want to achieve in your business and why you're running your own business. But you can't seem to achieve that vision and you may start to become frustrated that you aren't. Like I said, there's these little bits and pieces that just you just can't quite, you can't quite fix. doesn't matter how tr hard you try, you just can't seem to get that part to work as well as you have imagined that it would be. And your business is well established, you're attracting your ideal clients and you've started to put some boundaries around how you're working with prospective clients. So we spend a lot of money often doing free quoting, you know, running around doing stuff for free for people and you start to realise that 
you don't have the time to do all this free stuff. You need to be concentrating on doing the stuff you're getting paid for and servicing the clients that are paying you to do stuff. So you start putting in boundaries around who you want to work with. You know, you're going to start maybe charging them for quotes and you start, I guess, putting in some systems and processes so that you are a, a bit more protected from all this barrage of people wanting stuff done for free. Um, so you, you're getting those ideal clients, the ones that you prefer to work with and the preferred projects that you work with. So most of the clients I work with won't settle for a standard home. They have specific non-negotiable things that they want in their house and they definitely want a custom home. So the majority of these types of clients are usually building their last home for or their forever home and they want what they want. And all of those projects are within the niche that you want to build in and you sort of stop taking on all the work that you don't want to do. So, again, an example is we do design and construct projects. So very rarely we will build homes that have been designed by someone else. We might do maybe one a year, but we prefer to work with clients that trust our expertise to design and build their home and that then we know we're not really competing with other builders as it's our design and they can't be price shopped out. So you, this is the stage where you're consistently profiting each year and cash flow is more consistent. And you would have probably wound down your marketing efforts as you're consistently getting referrals or clients know you by your reputation. So I have people come into my office that you know, they say, oh, we just see you signed everywhere or we're seeing your houses and we like your houses. So you're not necessarily putting as much effort into marketing. The, there's sort of a natural attrition of people coming to you because they've, they're seeing more of the, your work or they're hearing little buzzes around town about about your, your builds basically. So I guess you're working on the business to polish that up a bit and start to make yourself profit more from all your hard work that you've done in the previous three stages. So you're starting to see those benefits of systems and processes and you're starting to build a culture in your business among your crew. And when I refer to your crew, I'm talking about your employees and your trades and also with your clients. You know, that you might start, you know, have you might have a Christmas party and bring all your old clients there. You know, you're starting to build a bit more of a, a culture within your business that makes people want to they become attracted to you. They want to keep coming back or they're going to refer people to you. And then the last stage is liberate. So I'm relating this to final or the practical completion stage. So within this stage, you're achieving what you want. You're achieving your goal. You're consistently attracting your ideal client. You're consistently converting those ideal people into your ideal client. And you're predominantly building your ideal projects, and you're consistently getting referrals. I guess you're consistently profiting from your business and you do have consistent cash flow. So your clients are predominantly satisfied with the occasional difficult client, but you, I guess, have the knowledge on how to quickly deal with any issues that arise from all your previous experiences in the other phases. And you are getting repeat clients that have previously worked for you and you're working mostly on your business rather than in it. So this is the phase where you become liberated from your business. You have, over the previous stages, stages implemented your systems and processes that give you more freedom, and you're now wanting to, I guess, start the process of removing yourself from the business to have extended holidays, or you might want to sell it, or you might want to pass that business down to your children. So through the elevation, not elevation, through the evolution of these phases within your business, I guess the different frameworks, different frameworks need to be installed at the different phases. And if you install those frameworks in the wrong order, it can cause complications for you in your business. So often builders may skip a growth phase and you may start to get gaps that cause your headaches. And the best way to plug those gaps is to look back to the previous phase and recognise what may be missing. So when I was doing some research for my programs that I'm developing, I often heard from clients that when they had worked with industry coaches previously, they were given very generic information. 
and that I guess that information they were delivering to them, they felt like they weren't being heard and the information didn't relate to what stage they were in in their business. So I started to realise that and for a building business to get a transformation from working with a consult, like a consultant or a coach, they need to be a more custom approach to the phase that they are in within their business. So this is why I've developed these phases so that within my programs, a potential client can assess the phase that they are in, they can work through the challenges and the circumstances and the conveniences that they face at those stages. And this is where my catchphrase of as custom of the homes you build comes in. So the programs that I'm developing, I guess you have the ability to choose a phase to work through and it will shortcut your ability to get you to the next phase um, quicker and I guess skip some of the headaches that I can, you know, let you know about that you, you may not foresee that people have already gone through those phases. So whilst working through that phase, you might realise that you've missed the concept of an important aspect and you may need to step back to rebuild an aspect that you may have been missing that I guess could catapult you and your business just by, I guess, like I mentioned in the polishing stage, just by polishing that one section. Everything else is working, but then there's just this one missing link that you can't seem to get a grasp on. And that may be because you've skipped something in a previous phase. So you might need to go back and go, actually, I've missed this bit. I don't understand this concept. Maybe plugging this will help me catapult my business to the next level. So I guess the, the liberating stage is where you do realise that you're su successful in your business and there's still these aspects that need to be tweaked and processes and systems put in place. So if you want, I guess, to do an assessment to determine what phase you're in and you can direct message me through Builders Talk um, Facebook page and we can schedule a time to do the assessment together but until next week, keep powering your business. And I do have quite a lot of comments over here that I'll have a little look through. Um, so Larissa says, I have experienced this stage in my business. I haven't paid myself. I know how it feels. Yes, we often, when we're through that sort of launching and growth stage, we don't often pay ourselves, And we are living on credit or, with, or capital that we already had, you know, a lot of people, and I've heard a lot of builders, and I, I've, I've even done it myself, is at some point we had to remortgage our own our own property to get the money that we needed for our business, and we don't we don't want to do that. You know that then makes you not as secure in your business because you've potentially loaded your own house up with money that's owed. That if if you know things do really go pear shaped and you have to go bankrupt or anything, you know, you lose that. So it's better to, to not be eating into that capital or into that credit. And if you can get a leg up by knowing these different phases and what you may, may face in those things, it can help you get over those phases quicker. Um, building reputation can be long-term and it can pay you back in 10 years, but uh, that is what I experience in exporting. That's right. It, I mean, it can take a lot of years to get that reputation. Um, it took, I mean, it, depend, it depends on what you do to build that reputation. You know, it can, people can shortcut it. We, when we first started our business, we went in the building awards the very first year that we'd finished one of our clients' homes. Previous to that, we'd been developing and building our own places, so we hadn't really entered any awards. But when we moved into the client space, we went in the awards the first year, we won an award the first year, and we won awards nearly every year after that since we've been building. So that helped us build our reputation a little bit quicker than maybe what someone else would have. So there is ways that you can build reputations quicker if you, I guess, know that those things are there to help you build reputation quicker. And they're the type of things that consultants can, can talk to you about and let you know that will shortcut you compared to one of your other competitors. Um, amazing program, taking your clients by the hand and walking them through the process. Yeah, so Larissa, my passion is in the building industry and I really want to improve the building industry. And what I've found is, you know, most 
people out there are, are starting you at the basics, you know, you, you think, I really need help, I'm stuck. And most people, it, it, it's not until they get to the, I guess, the secure phase, which I know sounds a bit counterproductive, they're secure in what they're doing, they're making money, but they start to realise that it's not consistent and there's lots of improvements that they can put in that will just really take them to that next level. So they start looking for help. They're the people that start seeing they do need help. So they go and seek help, but then the help they're getting is more that foundational back to launch stage, you know, fix up your website, get business cards made, get brochures made. Like it's it's not where you're at. You're You're at this stage. You've already gone through that launching stage and you really need to know when I'm here at this stage of secure, what can I do that's really going to, push me to that polishing stage and get me really better returns on my business for the effort and the risk that I'm taking. So being able to do that assessment and say, all right, where am I actually right at my at the moment in my business? And the assessment that I've got basically, it highlights parts that you may have those gaps like I've spoken about. So you might go, okay, mostly I'm in phase three, but I've got these two little bits up here that that are just not working for me and I can't seem to get those to work. So you might need to go back and just tweak those bits to then, you know, push you on to that next level. Uh, Robin says, exactly, once you get the foundational strategies, you can, I can't say that word, Robin, (laughs) extrapolate (laughs) to most other businesses. So, yeah, in it, it doesn't matter what business you're in, pretty much the foundations of business is the same. So I obviously relate mine to the building industry so that it's more um, understandable to people within a building business rather than talking about it in some other, you know, the word jargon is often used. You know, if someone's talking about it in the jargon of accounting, you know, you might think, well, this doesn't relate to me. But if you strip it back and look at the, the basics of that information, you'll find that that you can actually use that for your own business. Um, so Larissa says, beautiful awareness and knowledge, Ange. You are revolutionising the building industry. I'm trying, Larissa. That is what I'm actually trying to achieve. So hopefully, um, you know, people, I guess, get on board and start seeing that. And it typically hasn't, there typically hasn't been the education for the building industry. You know, it's, it's very, it's a very different type of business. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot involved in the building business, and you sort of need that custom plan to get you through those things. But anyway, until next week, keep powering your business, and I will see you then.